Hey everybody, welcome to the Dad Challenge Podcast. My name is Josh, thanks for joining me today. Well, we've got a bit of a different video today. Considering what I've been talking about for the past several days, it's been sitting in my head rent-free, this whole world of social media when it comes to kids and the dangers of it all. One of the things I uncovered yesterday was that there are AI bots being used to replicate rappers' voices, replicate famous people's voices, replicate children and everything. And it got me thinking just from that video two days ago to today, how much scarier this world just got and we really need to break it down. Dove released a video, get your tissues ready. I also discovered some AI that will literally replicate anybody's voice and it's hard to tell. So let's talk about it. It's gonna be a little bit of an emotional roller coaster today. This first video I watched last night in bed and I started to cry. Send it to a couple of people. My wife didn't wanna watch it because she saw me. I was having one of those moments. I'm not really a big crier, not really. But for some reason, maybe I'm on my period or something. <laughs> Yesterday, I don't know if it was the algorithm or something, but I was going through my, my Instagram because I like to laugh before I go to sleep. And I just love scrolling those Instagram thing reels and they're all funny. But for some reason I got on like dad Instagram or like body positivity Instagram or something. And there was so many videos and I was just like, <laughs> I think I needed a good cry. I think that's just what I needed. And this video is what kicked it all off. So I don't know if I'll get copyright strike for this. Um, and if so, I'll just change it a little bit and put, whatever my own side music behind it but um the music obviously hits but this is a again trigger warning sensitive comment the following film features real stories about body appearance that may be upsetting to some viewers we're going to talk about the dangers of social media not just these kids who are on it and acting on it but overall what i'm trying to do is convince you to never allow your kids on social media that's my goal now <laughs> so here let's watch this together and this is a true story <laughs> You are so beautiful to me, can't you see? You're everything I hope for, everything I need. You are so beautiful.
If you watch something like that and you have children and your immediate reaction isn't to like, there's no way I'm ever going to give my child a phone, then you're doing it wrong. If you have a kid who already has a phone, is already on social media, if your immediate reaction is to not make sure that they are off that at all costs, then you're not paying attention. They just said three in five kids are suffering all of these issues because of social media. And that's not just, and I know I touched on this with the just going to Jolie thing, that's not just transgender issues. It, it's all that, including everything else. And when we have people like Eugenia Cooney, which who I'm going to talk about soon, on this platform, who is obviously sick to the point where I don't know how long this girl has to live. Like, I don't know how you can survive being this small. I don't know how your body is even functioning without giving it any food. And she is celebrated and looked up and looked... And look, she is also denigrated. She is also chastised. She is also thrown under the bus to the nth degree by so many people. But she's also exploited by her mother. She's... Eugenia Cooney is the one who is paying her parents her mom's bills. Eugenia Cooney is the money maker. And her mom is not doing anything to help her. But yet there... and. The thing is, you won't. You, you might see a couple of comments of girls saying you're so pretty and all this and that, but it's the most of them who aren't really saying things and they're journaling and they're thinking this stuff. This stuff gets internalized. They watch it and they internalize it. They might not even leave a comment, but they internalize it and they want to be that type of thing. So, like, I don't care what anybody says against me about my, my stance when it comes to children and transgender issues and dysmorphia issues and everything else. The real social contagion is social media. It's not just a social contagion that for, that is coercing children into into gender dysphoria and everything else. It's all kinds of eating disorders. It's looking at influencers and I every one of them I cover that and this is just hear me out for a second. And I'm uh, the one initially I think of right off the top is Tara, Tara Henderson. Okay? Tiffany Beeston, Micah Stoffer. Um, Love Mank, all these ones, um, Bits of Brie and everybody else. They have this such this perfect body that they have achieved through likely drugs that are for weight loss, plastic surgery, which includes nose jobs, butt jobs, uh, boob jobs, f filler, lips, everything else. And if you don't think that that's actually what's happening, I just did a thing on Colby Shea where she's going in and getting Botox and fillers in her lips and forehead. She's 19. Because she is in this world and she needs to look like everybody else that is in this world. The beauty influencer movement needs to be regulated. And I know I'm a libertarian and I, ca I can't stand too much government intervention. Th the reason I'm for some kind of government intervention is when it comes to protecting children. Because clearly the parents aren't doing what they're supposed to be doing. And so... It's up to the government to step in, which is why CPS exists, which is which why people who are in positions of power over kids have to be mandated reporters for, to a certain degree. Because although we are more accepting in this generation than we ever have been any generation previous to us, we are also the generation of parents who completely have no bonds with our children. We have let them be raised with TV, social media, tablets, and phones. And yet we're still like, but I'm so accepting. So if they want to be this thing, I'm so accepting. But because you're, and a lot of it is because you are receiving the benefit from your child doing this online, like Jazz Jennings, like like Jess Fam, which we're going to talk about in a minute, like Jonathan Sakona Jolie, Eugenia Cooney's mom. These people get to benefit from their children's from their children's suffering. Now, all these children are suffering. Like when it comes to Jess Fam's Lilia, she they don't we don't know. We just know that she's part of the LGBTQ spectrum. We don't really know, but they are using it and they'll continue to use it to make money on grift off of that. And one of the darkest, most evil apps is TikTok. Because it make it it turns it makes people do shit like this. And so that's a person that their baby is suffering or in sickness or whatever, and they do a dance. That is one of the most disgusting things that TikTok has churned out for me, in my opinion, is people taking serious topics and doing shit like that. And that's not the first time that's ever happened. Also, TikTok's a place where you have this, a child that has since passed, but the mother absolutely used this child to grow her platform and make money while day after day, day after day, showing this child suffering on TikTok. Now, a lot of people will say, well, it's bringing awareness, but do you have to, and I will say this time and time again, especially when it comes to terminal children, you don't have to show it every single day. And this kid was the brunt of a lot of jokes and obviously will never understand that, but the mother was putting this child out there against this child's consent and this kid lived and died on TikTok. This has been made okay. 
because of the algorithms that TikTok has placed in Western culture. You can't get this video in China's TikTok, in some other countries' TikToks. You can't get it. It doesn't exist. It is a social contagion. Social media is a social contagion that trapped us as kids, starting out as far as ICQ and MSN. Remember MSN chat, and then ICQ is first, and MSN chat, and then it started into MySpace, then it started into Facebook and everything else. It all became this huge thing. I just listened to the Witch Trials of J.K. Rowling. I need you guys to go listen to that podcast, okay? I'm going to be doing an entire show on it because that's how important it is. But they did this episode on when this all kind of started happening. And it all became, the social contagion started happening when forums and threads started allowing you to upvote things and look at the top things like Reddit. If you don't think that social media is a social contagion, you're not taking it seriously enough. Not only is there an increase of children saying they're another gender or another sex, um, increased by something like 5,000%, but eating disorders have skyrocketed. Kids unaliving themselves skyrocketed. It's all, it's, I know causation doesn't always equal correlation, but we just have to look at the data from when this started becoming these kids babysitters and they started immersing themselves in the six, seven hours a day of this stuff. And it directly correlates to what's happening right now, where we are as a society with our kids offing themselves in record numbers and look no further. Like we got bullied as kids like in person and I'm that's, and that still happens, but also kids are now have the added bonus of being bullied online, being bullied by their peers on social media. And, that sh and everybody's like, well, just turn it off. But that, I don't care where you are, it hurts. Especially if you have to go face them the next day in person. It's, it's doubled down and it's destroying our children. Social media is destroying our children. I showed you that because I, I think that was an important thing to show you. That that's a social contagion that, that does something like that dance. This girl's dancing in front of her sick baby. And people, and she, she had no, th I think she's deleted it since. But to, to put that out there was just, that's normal. That's natural. That's what people are doing. I promise you, after the things I've learned in this past couple of days, I've been I've been floundering back and forth. Do I give my daughter a phone so we can so we can message her and she can message her friends? Do I stay away from that? And I've made the hard choice completely that my daughter is not going to get a smartphone or ac unfettered access to a computer or my son, to, for that matter, because I did. My older sons they got they had unfettered access to the internet. They had smartphones since they were thirteen. This is, again, this is all shit that happened years and years and years ago. My oldest is 21 now, but we are starting to realize it now. I mean, I'm not, I'm not also not blaming parents who let their now teenagers and young adults grow up on there because we didn't know. We really didn't know. It's all just coming out now. It really is just starting to hit now because now we have all that data gathered as to what it did to those kids. And that's exactly what's going on with um, kids and these and puberty blockers and everything else. We are in dire straits because we are we are amidst right now, in my opinion, the the biggest unethical human experimentation that has ever existed, and that, and that has to do with kids and trans puberty blockers, uh, gender affirming surgeries, and everything else. That. All of that spiked to an nth degree because of social media. Don't listen to people that have been like, they've always been there. Because we all know, all of us who grew up in my generation, we all know that's bullshit. Okay, that's a straight lie. Social media is a social contagion and it, and it affects so many aspects of so many children's lives. And teenagers and young, young adults and adults. Okay? I don't think anybody could sit here and say, yeah, social media is a net positive overall. If you took the pros and cons of what social media does... For certain people who can deal with it, it's good. But for a lot, and I mean a lot, most people, it's bad. And this conversation is elevated to the point right now. We're talking about kids who are influencers now and kids who are, who are taking advantage of social media, right? And to the point where The View, who's one of the most liberal speaking voices on TV, came out with this segment yesterday. Let's watch. Many social media influencers use their children as characters in the content they post. Mm -hmm. And some of these kids are pursuing legal action now to make sure that they're financially compensated for it. There's a long, yeah, there's a long... People laughing in the audience. But that's not something to laugh about. It's true. It's what's happened. Why would you laugh about that? History of child stars being taken advantage of by their parents. And this is starting to feel the same way because people have been shooting their children since they were born. Nobody asked the kids. And now mm -hmm. these, the people know these kids' lives, got all their business. I mean, it's starting so to feel. So are they suing the companies or are they suing the parents? They're suing oh. parents. Hmm. It's... Obviously, these women are very well versed in what they're talking about. They've got writers who wrote this script and are like they're prompting to conversation, so they're asking. And I get that, I understand that. They don't know. 
the depths of what we we all know, especially on this channel. Okay, we know the depths of what we've seen, the shittiness, not just the kids, parents taking advantage of kids and making millions of dollars off them, but the predators, the predator playlist. Now we've seen the predator pin boards on Pinterest. We've seen so much of it. We've seen kids almost get murdered. We've seen. We've seen so many problems. We've seen kids get catfish. Delicious Doherty admits on one of her videos that James is being blackmailed at school. With what I'm about to show you after this, it's gonna I'm gonna scare the shit out of you again. And I'm trying to. The same thing and worse because now it's in the palm of your hand. So back when it was child actors and people growing up on sets, you had to have parents that showed up. Kids had to get these parts, be in these roles, and we talk about what happened. Ravens shared oh, a lot of that. Oh. They've talked a lot about what goes on there. Now any parent can do that. Yeah. Well, in the, the entertainment industry, they put in place the Coogan Law, which required companies to set aside 15% of earnings. Not companies, parents. To go right. to the child in a blind trust. But there's no protections for yeah, the influencer. No but that's the thing. It's like, why are you making your child your brand? <laughs> like, I don't understand that. I mean. Well, Sonny, Hostin, Hostin, whatever your name is, let me tell you why they're doing it. Money. Why are you even asking this question? It's always about money. These parents make millions of dollars. They don't have to work real jobs. All they have to do is show you their family life, the walkthrough. Look, we're at the park. Yay! Look, we're at Disney. Look, we're flying here. Look at this. My kid's in the hospital. Look, my kid's getting their braces done. Look, my kid's going through puberty. Hey, let's go bra shopping with my teenage daughter. Hey, look, we're in the bathtub. All they have to do is turn a camera on, film their life normally. It's fake, but normally show the best parts of it and collect big bucks. What do you mean, why are they making them the brand? Because they're so boring and garbage that they need to use their children who are innocent in all this because for some reason, weirdos like watching other people's kids. Even if you don't have any nefarious reasons for doing so, why are you doing it anyway? Has anybody ever asked anybody ever, why do you like watching other people's children online? What do you get out of that? And some people say, you know, it's cute and I like watching kids and I love kids. And so I get that. But do you not still find that so effing weird? You're weird and not normal. You are abnormal for doing that. We need to make that the shame. Oh, you watch other people's kids online? Yeah, I don't want to be, you're gross. You're disgusting. Don't do that. Well, we made that, we've made it okay. But the reason that it gets a lot of views is because there are literally millions of predators online. And that shit gets shared amongst these predators because it's free to them and it's legal for them to have. So I don't know what she's talking about. These influencer parents, and we all know who they are. We don't need to name check them, but you do see it on, on social media all the time. And they're doing stuff with their kids and they're telling you how to raise yours and all of this. So their children become their brand. They make money off of their children. I, There's I, your answer. I just think that's so, that's such a violation mm -hmm. of a child. I mean, I think. Here at this table, we talk about our families. We're sort of required to do it as part of the gig, and we're public figures. As you notice, I don't put a lot of pictures up of Paloma because she doesn't like it. Yeah. Because she has agency to say no. And and I and she's always kind of said no. I, I agree with that. My argument is, is less than like the agency of your child, right? Informed consent is that part she's talking about. The ch child can't give informed consent. But if you're talking about the agency of a child, you can, these people can and do force their children to do this. This is like, they, they convince their children or force them by saying, this is how we make money. This is how we go to Disney. This is how we get our cars and our houses. And if you don't do it, we're not going to have any of these things. They coerce their children and groom them into these types of roles. Again, my argument is less about agency because they are allowed to do it. But Gabriel, on the other hand, doesn't care. I don't want to make my kids my brand. I, I just, I don't understand but, and you know, I, the motivation We talk it. here about, you know, so many things, right? We yeah. talk here about so many school sh shootings. We talk here about pedophilia. It just, it feels to me that there, the world is so dangerous out there. And if you're putting these pictures of these little kids, they're going to be easily recognizable. They, you know, you're putting a target on their back. You're making them yeah. that much more vulnerable to... To bad things they should, they should be old well, enough to yes that's one of the biggest issues that has surfaced from my conversation about this with you guys so yes obviously expectation their futures their digital footprint all that's important but we talk about predators i think i think i talk about the predators yeah like 50 percent. but it's it's a bigger conversation it's the it should be the only conversation you need unfortunately but it's not right that's it if you know that your kids are being watched by predators you take your kids off the internet and all of these parents know it and have been shown, a lot of them have been shown proof that their kids are on these Pinterest boards and these predator playlists, and they don't do anything about it. 
Like I, I can't even imagine myself as a parent seeing my kids on a on a board somewhere and not doing everything in my power to at least destroy the person who did it. First of all, finding them and destroying them because that's just the danger of it. And I'm a person that has said many times on this platform, if your kids in your video in passing, not a big deal. If your kids are not the main reason you make any of your money and they're just part of the thing, eh, it's not a big deal. That's starting to shift a little bit now because of what AI is doing, which we're going to show you in a second. Because that AI just changed the game and changed the conversation on this channel in the past two days. To, to give consent to it, I think. And there, there Paris, uh, France just passed a law that mm -hmm. is allowing kids to sue their parents over yeah. this kind of thing. Um, it's not as easy here in the United States because parents actually have legal immunity from mm -hmm. the lawsuits against them when the kids are minors, believe it or not, civilly. Some of um, the most damage is so, done. Uh, that's when the most of the damage is done. So I think that the law, you know, people 18, are trying uh, it. Now and yeah. going, you, you had an opportunity this, to this, ask we, me, and this, where's my money? Yeah, you yeah. Also owe me money. all seen the like cruel underbelly of social media. I mean, everyone has like as public figures, we see the hateful, mean, cruel comments. I don't think it's fair for a kid to be subjected no. to them. I mean, people will say anything on the internet. They're going to attack kids' appearances. They're you know the way Absolutely. that they speak, the way they carry themselves, and I don't feel like we should subject kids that any earlier than they're already going to face. You, you know what? Agreed. And she's right. She's like, we're subjecting these children to this that they don't even know that they're going to be subjected to it. Like they're going to see everything that they've done online. It's going to, when they get to an age 10, 11, 12, and they're in school and kids are going to have access to this, those kids are going to find that shit. And a lot of these kids don't even get to go to real school anymore because the parents realize, oh, I can't put my kid in that position because the parents put them in that position. I can't even allow my school, I can't even allow my child to go to a public school, get a public school education or whatever, because I'm so scared of what is out there on the internet about them and I can't go. That's, and that, if you don't think that's selfish, you're selfish. Okay, it's the most selfish thing in the world. And a lot of them will home, take their kids out of school, homeschool them because they need them in content. So these kids are working their entire lives, have been working since they were born, literally born on the internet. And she's right. They are going to suffer the ramifications of everything because even if everything is innocent about them, their bullies, their enemies will find the negative about that. We talk a lot about the ills of social media, but I was struck this week by one of the benefits of social media because, but for social media and the activism and the demands for justice for Ralph Garl, uh -huh. that's true. That uh, 84 year old uh, racist, uh, you know, with the trigger finger would still be sleeping in his own home. But with the littlest ones, nobody does that because it's too easy yep. for people to take those pictures and mm -hmm. do all kinds of things with them. Yeah. So when you're doing these things with your kids, keep, it, keep in mind that you may think it's just people who like you who are looking at these pictures. It's not. Mm -hmm. It's people who are, have nefarious desires. And also, if you're making money on your family, put some money away for the kids. Yeah. Or just don't exploit your shades. Now, Whoopi Goldberg said something there. It was really important. There are people who are going to do this for nefarious reasons. They will always do this for nefarious reasons. I made a post on my community page and said, why is it when new technology emerges, it's always the predators and people who have bad intentions master it first and use it for the nefarious reasons? It is, because they are looking for it. They live in this in the dark underbelly of society, predators and chomos and everybody else, and they have to operate in those shadows. And so they, what they do is they take the technology that is offered to them and they make it into whatever they want and sell it now. That's what's happening. One of the things we talked about the other day was AI, the use of AI technology. And I want to show you how effing easy it is. It took me an hour to do this and discover all this. So there's a program. I'm not going to tell you the programs. I mean, you can discover them for yourself <laughs> uh, if you want to. But basically what you can do is you can clone a voice. Now, I'm going to show you how easy this is by using an adult, JustFam. Okay. And now JustFam is super upset with uh, that show that used her pregnancy without her consent or whatever. Okay. But I'm going to show you how easy it is to do this to do this in real in real time. Now the reason this now I don't think family vloggers have to worry about the side of people stealing their voices and their likeness to create content. I don't think that's ever going to happen on social media. It does happen though right now with Drake. There's a song that released Tyson came he's like listen to this and it's Drake and the weekend doing a song completely done by AI. AI has gotten so powerful and so far already I think ahead of humans being able to control it. That's how crazy AI has gotten. And, I'm, and I know AI has been around for a long time, but now it's because once, it's like once it becomes popular to use by regos, like me, you know that it's already far past development stages that we've ever seen. If it becomes available on a Chrome 
in Chrome, like to the degree I'm going to use it right now, you know that already it's light years ahead of this, what I'm about to show you. And so that's why this is dangerous. And so I want to show you guys how dangerous this can be. And predators already have access to this and they're already doing this. We already know that this is happening. But take someone like Jess Pham and her voice, who's, it's, it's a naturally annoying ass voice. I dropped into this program um, and it, it takes the script, okay? Of, and it writes it out for you in the script, okay? And I'm just gonna take this first part of the script and I'm gonna paste it into this speech synthesis app. Now, in order to create this cloned Jess voice, I had to add her voice. And all I did was add six segments of her voice that I found on her channel. That's it. I put my microphone up to the speaker and I played through six portions of different videos. So I get different tones and inflections in her voice. I've already pasted the content from the video that I gathered the information from. Okay, so I'm going to play this initial video for you first. Listen to this. Hi guys, been a minute since we talked here. I know I'm looking a little cray right now, don't worry. I really love watching people do chatty style, get ready with me type of videos. And I don't think I've ever done one before. So we're gonna do it right here, right now. Let's light a candle in honor of it. A portion of this video is actually sponsored by Skylar. Okay, hear that. Now I've put it all in there and I've changed, I had to fix a couple of spelling mistakes and I added, instead of this portion is sponsored by Skylar, I added a little thing, but listen to this. Hi guys, it's been a minute since we talked here. I know I'm looking a little cray right now, don't worry. I really love watching people do chatty style, get ready with me type of videos, and I don't think I've ever done one before. So we're gonna do it right here, right now. Let's light a candle in honor of me being a total moron. I added that part at the end. Now I wanna hear, you guys have to understand what I'm listening to and how I got this. Every single video of Jess just talking has music behind it, always. If you look at any Jess fan video, she adds this shitty like elevator style like trumpet music, stupid, it's shitty. But it's every video. This program is so smart, it took the, uh, the tone inflection and everything in, of her voice, eliminated music and created a voice with it. That voice, I don't care who you are, if you close your eyes, almost impossible to tell that it's not Jess. Okay, and that is with only five. This program, this specific one, asks for 25 bits of audio. So if I really wanted to spend time in this and find audio that was 25 different styles of audio from Jess Fam, I could do it. You know why? Because she has literally thousands of hours of her voice on the internet. I could do it. No problem. That took me 10 minutes. And if you, don't, and if you want to do something else and talk like her for real, I'm going to add a couple things. Ready? Okay, I've added a couple things. Now let's listen to it. Like, hi guys, it's it, it's been a hot like minute since we hella like talked here. I know like I'm looking like a little cray right now. Don't worry, I like really love watching people like do chatty style, get ready with me type of like videos and I don't think I've ever done one before. So like we're gonna do it right here, right now. Let's light a candle and honor the Dad Challenge podcast bringing awareness to how dangerous what I'm doing online is. Hella like totally, right? <laughs> Like totally, right? Do you hear what I just did there? I just changed a bunch of things. It mirrors tone and inflection and adds pauses and breaks and uhs and ahs. Guys, hear me out. This is the craziest thing. And again, when I say that this is how far it's come, already in development, it's 10 light years ahead of this. And to the point where you're going to be able to take the likeness of someone like Jess Fam or somebody and put it in a video and make your own video or an actor or an actress and put in a video and make a make a freaking you know it's going to be just indiscernible to a degree that you can't even tell it's done by ai it's already almost that close okay and people were just a hot minute ago in just fam's term we're putting their picture and making ai avatars which i've done too and i think it was really cool i still like it. i think there's benefits to ai i think the smartest people who embrace this technology early are going to make a lot of money tyson's over there in his room scheming right now about how he can turn this into a money-making venture I'm making a podcast on real crime and I'm using AI technology to help me do my research on the real crime uh, murders and the crimes. And it's really, really good and smart. I can ask ChatGPT to write me, th to write me a podcast script on Lori Vallow and the murders from Lori Vallow. And I've done that. I'm almost done it. And it's crazy. Okay, to this point where I could clone my voice so well that I could just type in the ChatGPT script into AI and drop it as a Neffing podcast. Okay, 
That's how easy this is going to get. People who want to make money will make large sums of money on AI. Most people will be left behind. Most people will suffer the consequences of AI. Most people will lose their jobs because of AI. AI is going to change the music. And you remember how Napster came along and changed music forever. The music industry was forever changed when we're downloading MP3s illegally, right? Now it's streaming. Streaming upset it. Now it's going to be AI that's going to upset the music industry. These artists are not going to have any, I mean, unless we get, unless the government steps in and takes complete control of like free speech laws and everything else, because people are just going to make songs that are going to be better, that are going to rival or be better than the original song makers. Because to write these songs, they're writing them and then they're just singing them and then AI is changing the voice. So some people who don't have the ability to be famous are now being able to write songs better than the original artist. It is going to get crazy. There's going to be lawsuits galore coming out soon. Artists have a lot to protect. We're talking billions of dollars in the industry. Cartoon voices. You're going to see actors now sell the rights to their voices to these people who are making cartoons. You can make Toy Story 12 long. You, Toy Story 15 long after Tom Hanks is gone. You're going to be able to hear Woody. Danger of this, and I wanted to show you this. I know we're having a little bit of fun with this. I'm going to show you the danger of this. How long did that take me? Read, listen to this. Hey, Lilia, it's mom. Okay, so don't panic, but like, I want you to meet me at the 7-Eleven by your school at lunch. I'll tell you more when I get there. But I have a super sweet, crazy surprise for you. Like, unreal. You are gonna love it so much. A lot of people are gonna be upset. My haters are gonna be upset that I just did that, but I needed to show you because I need to scare the shit out of you people. I need to scare the shit out of Jess fam. I need to scare the shit out of influencers. And maybe I'll make a whole series on this stuff. But imagine Lilia gets a voice text from her mom like that. Or voice message. As she could say, I can even change this. If you really wanted to get into this, listen. Hey, Lilia, it's mom. I know the number is weird, but my phone died and I'm using someone else's. Okay, so don't panic, but like I want you to meet me at the 7 Eleven by your school at lunch. I'll tell you more when I get there, but I have a super sweet, crazy surprise for you. Like, unreal. You are going to love it so much. Tell me that doesn't freak you out. All right? I hope Jess Fam's watching this shit. And I could do this for any family vlogger, any of them. I could do it for Dr. D, I could do it for Alicia, I could do it for anybody. You know why? Because I can pull your voice off the internet in an instant and thousands of hours of it. So again, I know I'm trying to do this to scare the living shit out of you because it's literally my intent. I need to scare you guys. I need you guys to see how dangerous this is for somebody, for any of these children online. So I talk a lot about on this channel about predators and how dangerous it is for these kids. This is one step way further. So if Lilia were to get that message, she likely wouldn't answer her phone because it's a strange, stranger danger number. But if their message was left, she would pick that up. Do you think a child would be able to tell the difference? That is almost indiscernible from Jess Fam's voice. And if you put the inflections, you know how Jess Fam talks like I do because I've heard her so much. I could put the inflections like the word like in there, like hella, unreal, and use some of the phrases because we can actually listen to conversations Jess Fem has had with Lilia on camera and take that and mirror that. This thing can change its inflection. Like I'm gonna turn down the stability of this. Watch this. Turn the stability down to zero. Now listen. Hey Lilia, it's mom. I know the number is weird, but my phone died and I'm using someone else's. Okay, so don't panic, but like I But if I bring up the stability, which is the more the variable, is increasing variability can make speech more expressive with output varying between regenerations. It can also lead to instabilities. But look, I'm gonna bring it up a little bit higher. 36%. Hey Lilia, it's mom. I know the number is weird, but my phone died and I'm using someone else's. Okay, so don't panic. But like, I want you to meet me at the 7-Eleven by your school at lunch. I'll tell you more when I get there, but I have a super sweet, crazy surprise for you. Like unreal. You are going to love it so much. Lily gets this heads over to the 7 I don't know if there's 7-Eleven. I'm just making it up, but I'm telling you. This shit just got so dangerous and so incredibly, and a lot of people are gonna be like, Josh, well, you know, you're showing people how to do this. If you don't think this is already going on, you're wrong. It's already happening. But maybe now that I'm showing it to you, and I don't care if this means I'm, I'm showing people how to do this. Good, I want to scare you, okay? So everybody right now needs to sit down with their children and make a plan, make something that has to go something like this. Look, if you get a call from me, and I don't use this code word, you know, anchors away or whatever it is know that it's not from me if i'm ever going to leave you a message or a text message or whatever the case may be and i don't use this code message it's not me and it's something you have to now we have to have a conversation this is more stranger danger than it's ever been before if you get a call and it's your kid on the other line because i can also do this with lilia's voice and call jess fam if i wanted to 
That's how easy it is because there is hundreds of hours of Lilia's voice on the internet. And I called Jess and said, don't hang up. Don't call the police. Don't do anything. It's already happening on mass. It's happening a lot, but it's just a matter of time before it's going to happen to one of these children. They're at more risk because we know how the parents talk, the inflections they use, the language they use. We can make it sound so natural because we know everything about them because they've shared it with you. So I'm telling you, this is so scary on all sides. Start having a conversation with the kids. Influencers, get your kids off the internet right now before it's too late. It might be too late. When we say the internet's forever, we mean it. Because even if you decide to take your videos down, that shit exists on the internet. I can still go find tons of videos of Micah Stoffer on uh, Billy Billy. Thousands and thousands of them. I can, I can to this day, I know she took her channel down, but st in Stoffer Garage still up there, but I can go find that. People can clone my voice, but you're not going to be able to call my kid because they're not going to have a phone. So again, I'm doing this and I know that it's going to be divisive and I know that people are going to be upset and think I took it too far. But at this point, I need to, I need to be provocative in my message so that people will start listening. I, it would be the, my worst nightmare if any of these family vloggers that I talked about, if any of their kids actually suffered through any craziness, got kidnapped or killed. And anybody who says otherwise, like, oh, Josh just can't wait till someone gets hurt. I, you, you can go get yourself f***ed if you ever think that, okay? That is my worst nightmare. And I would do everything in my power, my platform too, to help find them or uncover that too. I would, I would not rest by and say, I told you so. I would never sit and cross my arms and say, I told you so. I would do everything in my power to help too. But I'm telling you, this is going to happen. And if parents don't heed, heed now, now that you see this, any of those influencer parents, send them this video, this just segment. You, and I'll do this for more, just so they can get an, a little glimpse of what can happen. If they don't take their kids off after hearing this, you know they don't give a shit. Here's the thing. If Jess Fam understands the danger of this and doesn't tomorrow take every video but her children off the internet, we know she doesn't give a shit. Send this video to her. Make sure Jess Fam knows that this exists because that shit is crazy. Okay. Tell me know what you think below. Did you know this existed? Did you know the danger? Did you know the accuracy of it? Do you think there's danger? Am I, am I overthinking it? Am I clutching my pearls? Am I over worrying? I don't know, but I'm thinking if I, if my kid got a phone call like that, they would believe it. That's what I'm thinking. And if they walk over to 7-Eleven to some nefarious plan, shit just hit the fan. Shit just got real. And that is why this is so scary. It's why your kids shouldn't have phones anyway. Maybe you can get them the iWatches where they can get text messages and stuff. That's fine, right? Maybe get them an old school phone or something. But don't give them unfettered access to the internet. Emergency use only phones until they're old enough to, be, to protect themselves, maybe. Again, let me reiterate, I am trying to scare the shit out of these people. That is my plan here. But not for, the, not for fun and not for funsies, but to actually plead with them to please take into consideration the safety of your children because it the game just changed it changed forever all right everybody take a deep breath i know it's a more serious video and that's really really important video i think everybody needs to share this okay and start making plans with your own children regardless of how famous you think you are or not predators don't care if your kids are famous like I mean, famous kids are actually probably a little bit more padded and protected from this because if they get taken or hurt or whatever there's going to be an entire internet after them it's the kids that go the 30 was it th how many kids go missing every year an estimated 460,000 children are reported missing every year by the fbi stats okay and a lot of them aren't famous most of them aren't because they are a little bit more padded from that so if anything this is meant to scare you and to start making a plan for your children get them off the internet if they are creating content on the internet get it gone now okay if they are on social media if they're on snapchat if they're on tiktok if they're on youtube get them off now okay because of those 460,000 kids that go missing none of them are the family vloggers that i cover and it's just a matter of time before it happens but it's the it's the kids that are on and this and they are targeting these children who are online get your kids off the internet right now for more than one reason for the social contagion it is and for the dangers that it presents to your children okay Thank you for being here. Thank you for having these tough conversations with me. Thank you for taking parenting seriously and loving your kids and protecting them. Because that's the most important thing we can do. You are incredible and valuable. Don't you forget it. And I will see you tomorrow. <laughs>